tonight because we, we wanted to, well, we come every, every meeting that we can, but we wanted to talk about some of the things that are going on right now because BASS, which is, a, for those of you who don't know, is a, is a high cloud national organization of fishermen, and fishermen all over the country and the world follow what they do. And since they've awarded the St. Lawrence River as being the number one bass water in the world, basically, uh, we're really trying to to, to take that, that token that they've given us and really capitalize on it. And some of the things that we're doing right now, we have two, um, two basic big tournaments coming to Messina, uh, three tournaments still in the works, and one of the biggest is the FLW. It's a competitive group of anglers to the ASS, and they're coming here in September. In conjunction with that, we want to bring as many families as we can to Messina, to the waters around Messina to discover, number one, about what, what that whole area is, but also to realize that Messina has sort of taken the, the forefront here of utilizing what we have and champion it as the gateway to the, the best fishing in the world. So the one poster you see on the right is one that we've just made up for this Kids Fishing Derby, any of the kids here to, to really be aware of this, that's going to be on Saturday, September 21st, in conjunction with the FLW coming here. It's going to be at Wilson Hill. We're going to give every kid that enters a, a brand new rod and reel. I'm going to be out, and we, we want press coverage of this, tagging fish right there along Wilson Hill. Not someplace out the river. Right there where the, these kids can catch them. And uh, the kids are excited. We, we just spent a day... On Fort Drum, Saturday, it's called Fort Drum Family Day. And we, we had a stand there talking about what's happening in Messina. And we've got already, just since then, over 60 kids that have registered to be part of this. It's all free. And it's something that stands for what Messina is doing. And so uh, the other posters that you see, and I want you to be aware of this also. This winter, in February, we have a, we hoped it to be the biggest in the East, fishing expo coming here to Messina. And it's taken us years to build the fact that these national people are starting to see Messina as the place to come. And we're going to bring the top manufacturers, the top experts in fishing here to give seminars. And we want to bring people from Canada and the U.S. alike. And it's being done by the top fishing promoter in the East, uh, out in Boston, Dan Kennedy. So he's shown confidence in us, and he's willing to make this a starting point to go forward. This isn't going to be just a one-shot wonder. It's going to come every year. So that's the, the, the expo that you see on the left that's coming in February. And we always want people to be aware of our Big Bass Blowout, which is coming in October. 
and that's the poster in the middle, and that's growing every year, where we give people from all over the area a chance to take part in something that a lot of times only the pros do in other tournaments. So we're proud of this, and it's only the beginning. So that's what we've been working on, and, and we're excited about, I'm, I'm really excited about the reaction we're getting from the kids coming here. And I, I'm hoping it's only the beginning, because we're going to be talking about bringing fishing into the schools of this area as well, and forming teams. And so that's another thing on our agenda. So, and we have these handouts too, if you want to know more about the Expo coming uh, this winter, we'll leave some handouts over on the table. So you have that information at your ready. So, and if, if any of your friends, you have any friends, uh, they can go online to register for the kids. Uh, Fish Messina. FishMacinaNY.com. I should know that by heart. But <laughs> I've spent, so that's it. Don, do you think maybe that could get us on the list of access to the St. Lawrence River? <laughs> <laughs> I, We've been listen, left off two years. Listen, I've been, I've been pushing for that, and, and, and Bob and I have talked about that, so... Uh, Yes. We have. Yes. And uh, one final thing. When the, when the Bass Elite came here, they contacted me to, and, I, and I, I, I went to their media tent and talked to the people in charge of their, their media and talked to them that for this coming year, they can coordinate with me and what we're doing in Messina for anything that, and my statement was, maybe we can help you to make this even bigger for you and you can help us. So that's another, you know, we want to cover all the bases. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Cunningham. Yeah, um, I'd like to take this opportunity and talk about the um, Messina East area and the water district of that area and how we need to think of the positive ways that we can move forward with, with it. Um, I would like to introduce John Condito of Barton and Lindy's to talk about the pre uh, primary planning of the water district of that area. And if I said a name wrong, I do apologize. <laughs> you did, you did a very good job. Right. <laughs> uh, but I think it's something important we need to think about in uh, yes. these entities and to continue to move forward in the right direction for Messina. Thank you. you did a great so, job. Thank you. Again, I'm John Condino. I'm with Barton and LaJudas. Uh, we're a firm that's actually based um, out of uh, Syracuse, New York, but we have uh, now have a very large active office in Watertown where I'm from. So. I get to cover the North Country where I grew up, which, which has really been great. Uh, known Steve uh, for quite a while now, uh, and Sam, and uh, we've been talking uh, about some infrastructure needs within the community, uh, specifically about uh, possibly extending uh, some of the water infrastructure to, uh, to the east. Um, and one of the things that uh, this proposal does is it kind of gives us a sort of a formal introduction uh, to the board and the community uh, to be able to hire us to at least begin discussions with some of the major stakeholders, uh, New York Power Authority, St. Lawrence Seaway, uh, Racer, Alcoa, U.S. Customs and Border uh, Protection. Uh, talked about, we've, we've talked a little bit about the concept of, uh, of expanding water into those areas, which again would not only serve those stakeholders, but also would serve uh, people along the way. So we're excited to, to get started. Um, on this, and, and we would hope uh, with that would be a start on identifying uh, some of the, uh, the greater infrastructure needs in the, in the community. We have a lot of them. And that's what we like as a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody has any questions for me, um, a little background on our on our firm. We've been around. Uh, we started in 1961. Um, we again are. Centered uh, our home uh, home base is in uh, is in uh, Syracuse, New York, but we have offices now all around the state: Watertown, Albany, Rochester, Buffalo, Binghamton, uh, down in the Hudson Valley. Um, we primarily serve small communities. Um, that's been our that's been our bread and butter for forever. Um, we do water and wastewater infrastructure. We do bridges, highways. Uh, facilities are pretty much a full service shop. We've got an environmental uh, division, and um, as I say, pretty much any municipal needs, uh, those are things that, uh, that um, we focus on and, and we can help with. Uh, so we're excited to uh, 
hopefully expand up into the North Country up here. Again, it's where I grew up. It was a time when I actually worked up here in Messina for, for a few years. Um, so it's kind of like uh, kind of coming home. Yeah, one of the things that uh, Melanie and I have talked to you about is just exploring all the different opportunities. Yes. Not just running a water line three miles out from the nearest village water line, but um, talking to St. Regis Mohawk Drive. Yeah. Uh, there's still that uh, water intake at Alcoa East. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we want to look at everything. Sure. Right? Yes, I agree. Yep. So, uh, Babe, uh, made a proposal to start the conceptual drawing. This was going to be tied in with our um, strategic plan that that we want to develop with the village. Uh, our comprehensive plan is back from, what, 1998 or something yeah, like that? Yeah. So a strategic plan would give us a direction and a way to move ahead in the future with some guidelines, and we were going to tie all this in together, but uh, and uh, our the uh, water infrastructure needs might not be part of a strategic plan only because they are present right now. Right. These are things you got to deal with today. A strategic plan would be how do we plan to replace systems five years down the road, ten years down the road. I don't yes. think they got time. Although I see us partnering a lot in the process. Yes. So. Yes. Well, I, I agree with you. The thing is. Do you, you prioritize and then the funding comes in or are they together? So one of the things that... Opportunities for funding. Yes, actually, you know, one of the things that, that <coughs> frankly our folks have become experts in is working with the funding agencies. You really don't have a project. It's difficult to move any of this infrastructure work forward without a good funding package. So that all has to be tied in. So the first thing you do is you do a conceptual, you look at your major stakeholders, you understand what the needs are, uh, also understand what the, you know, what the acceptance within the community is. Once you've got all that, you've got the, got the, you know, the, the beginnings of, a, of an infrastructure project, that's what you begin to, uh, frankly, take to the, uh, to the funding agencies, because you've got to have the money to do it. So we get tied in you know, with, with both ends of it. Uh, but I, I'm proud to say that our guys are, we've done, a, we've done a lot of infrastructure work around the state. We continue to do so and we do that because, frankly, I think uh, we're some of the, we get some of the best folks when it comes to identifying and securing the funding needed. Good. Yeah. That's a huge part of it. And if I could add, there is funding out there right now. Uh, unfortunately, the window was too tight for this probably what we're working on uh, through uh, wastewater and drinking water improvement programs. Yes. Right? The state has lots and lots of money for these projects, but you need engineering drawings, you need to have the work done ahead. An engineering now. report. Exactly. You, you, so you've got to set the project up so that so that the project is ready to be executed, yes. is what the funding agencies want to see. So but there's the a lot of work involved. Money. And, and it's, Steve, you and I have talked, and Sam, you and I have talked, you know, it's a it's a three to five year process to get one of these projects started, identify it, package it correctly, uh, and then and then understand that it's a very competitive process when you're going after these funds. So the the you know the, the better that that project is prepared and ready to go, the better chance the community has of garnering of garnering, garnering the funds. So those are and it's it's a it's a long lengthy process, but in the end. Uh, it's it's uh, there is a lot of money out there, and it and it you know it's, it's possible for the town to capture their share of it. Quite frankly. Okay. And I've uh, sent you that proposal, to, uh, council members. I'd like to get a motion to accept uh, BNL to do the conceptual project for the start of uh, two thousand dollars. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? I recuse myself due to the fact my employer may be a major stakeholder in the process. One, abs one abstention. Sam Carbone. Councilman. 
Got it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, John, for coming. Thank you. If, uh, Steve, you don't mind. I, I may stick around just to, it's, uh, I always like to find out kind of what's going on. And, you know. Whatever you want. Help yourself. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you very, thank you very much. Yep. And what? Yes, $2,000. I will give you a copy if I, I think I did. And tied in with that, uh, we were also talking uh, about the strategic plan. And our community developer, Jim Murphy, is here to talk a little bit to us about that. All right. Um, well, this comes from a conversation that town supervisor and Tim Courier, the village mayor, had about the timing and whether or not we were ready as a community to undertake the strategic plan, another strategic planning process. And uh, I think we are, I think we're at a, as I read through the original or the last town of Messina comprehensive plan, which was updated in 2001. So just by the basis of that period of time, I think as, uh, as Mr. Nicola said, uh, this was in response to the ice storm. It was. So all the conditions that we based our planning on no longer exist. So the idea of a strategic plan, basically it's a macro, very top-down view of where we are. So it's a thorough assessment, first of where we are, our strengths, our weaknesses, and, and also what our mission is. Is the mission still valid that was here? I'm going to think you're going to find different priorities, things like that. It's uh, also doing an environmental scan, collecting a lot of data, talking to a lot of people. I mean, this had dozens and dozens of people involved. Uh, it is also looking forward five years, ten years down the road. And the idea is to try to figure out who and where and what we want to be in the future, at some future point, and then work our way back and come up with a plan to get there. It sounds simple, but it's it's not. Where, where I often find that the complication is, and even Bob Beck says this, well, strategic plans are such a waste of time as I walk in. Well, they are if they sit on a shelf. They are if they're not. Strategic plans don't implement themselves. And so I think we're, what, we're, what our approach might be a little bit different is not only to make it sort of action-oriented, but building the implementation process for this. I believe that strategic plans should be a part of your budgets. It should be part of your deliberations when you look at what projects you're working on. It should be part of your human resources evaluations. How well did you meet our plan? And it's, it's about accountability and things like that. So, But it's also a lot of effort, a lot of work. And it should only be done when you're not in a crisis mode and things like that. And I think this is a good time to do that. The other advantage, in a way, is that I've had the opportunity to probably work on at least a half a dozen strategic plans for municipalities, public organizations, the St. Lawrence County Arts Council at one time. So as part of my role here, I think this is where I save you some money in consultants, because <laughs> I think I could put this together and develop a process and walk the community through that process. So if it's something that you guys are willing to do, I think that it's a process well worth it, especially right now when there are so many uncertainties about where we are going. I mean, we know where we were. We'll never be there again. But where is it? We hear from Don Meisner, great opportunities for tourism, and how do you connect strategically to make the most of those things? Uh, we talk a lot about power and the power of power to bring in you know, different types of things. Strategically, how do you want to do that? We, we talk about excess property, racer property, other property that the town owns. 
how do you get the most bang for that, not only in just dollars, but in jobs and in economic activity? All that's part of this process. So, and if we can do it without a big consultant bill or something like that, that's even better. Any questions about how the process works or what we hope to get out of it? Again, uh, it's all what you put in. I'm not going to say, in another municipality, in another life, I worked on a strategic plan where the lead official said, whatever you do, Jim, don't put anything specific in it because I don't want to be held accountable. <laughs> that strategic plan was not very successful. <laughs> so. So as strategic plan compared to a comprehensive plan. And that's the level because that's what you'd have to decide. And the first step would be to develop a team, including the chief fiscal officer, the chief financial officer, you know, council is involved in this at some level to determine the scope of the process. Because a comprehensive plan, right, Eric, is codified in law. It's, you know, it's not just an idea or a good thing, a guideline. It's part of municipal law. And if that's the way you want to go, that's a whole different type of process. And the other thing, too, that makes these things work is how well you engage the public. These plans can't be made up by two or three or five people. It has to be part of a very, especially a comprehensive plan, where there are requirements for public hearings and engagement and feedback. And trust me, if you're trying to get people and your staff to buy into these things, they got to be involved. they got to know about it. The biggest reasons that uh, strategic plans fail is that they're not communicated and that they aren't implemented. So. But that would be a decision, I think, by the town, how on the scope of this thing. <coughs> and, and I have no proposal. There's no, you know, we're, obviously, I don't think there's a charge to this. And I would be happy if, if you'd like to move forward, basically, just to set up a planning team and, and start the process. Maybe that's, you know, if there was a proposed resolution, that would be a, if, if, again, if there's a will to do this, if you think. I just think there's a, this is the perfect time. Sure. You just went through a, a consolidation study. There are different ways that you connect. You've got an airport. You've got a museum. You've got a library. All of these things will all be looked at. And the last one you said was done in 2000. It was revised in 2001. It was from 98. So, and you know, and nobody on the list of people that worked on it are around today. Let's put it that way. Or were you on the list? I didn't see you on the list, so I'll take it back. One person. <laughs> yeah. But he even had the AIOU. Al Nicola and God. <laughs> and that. That was Jim, and it was difficult to uh, implement. Implementation wasn't really strong. It was, you know, as long as the ice it was generated by the ice storm, and when the effects of that started, it, the effects of the it, it got to the bookshelf and stayed there. Yeah, and which is a problem, and it's not endemic to Messina. I see it a lot. Which is why this process really gets a bad rap, I think, a lot of times. It's because yeah. of, you know, it's something you have to do, but don't worry about it because nobody's going to read it or you really think about it anymore. Yeah. But, but more and more, especially with the CFA processes and the way the North Country Regional Economic Councils work, all of the proposals have to be tied to a, a very comprehensive or strategic plan. Yeah. They don't want you just to want a laundry list of, hey, let's try this, let's try this. They want to see it that you're thinking this strategically. And, and so it is important more than ever, just even for fundraising. Yeah, because it's an application you have to refer to. Both yours and the council's. Yeah. And how they all connect together and support it. So, can I have a... Uh, Motion if we want to move ahead. Second.
make yourself busy. I or busy or just realize. <laughs> <laughs> I love these things are fun. <laughs> okay, thank you. Jim, sure. And, uh, you'll probably look to move your office away from the other side of the <laughs> All right. What do you want to do? Me? Jump in and see. Sure. We'll come in under. So oh, I'm sorry. Let's vote on that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So okay. All right. We'll jump ahead to. Sure. Okay, I understand that. Speed limit reduction on North Rankin. Sure. So back a few years ago, there was an attempt to get the speed limit reduced on North Racket. I spoke to some of the residents out there, still, you know, major concerns with the speed limit that's out there. Um, I we may have some people that can help us, hopefully. Um, there has been a lot of chatter, I guess, with the residents and other concerned uh, residents of Messina of that speed limit. Um, I do have a package from a resident here with uh, pictures and a, a nice letter. I think Todd has a petition as well as yeah. maybe some other letters. Um, I was going to show a video. Uh, I think we're going to revamp our video system a little bit so it's a little more user friendly. I think it's about 13 years old. But uh, so I went to Plan B and I uploaded a video to YouTube. It's uh, North Racket River Road Speed Reduction. So it's just a video of the road. Um, I should travel through at the speed limit. I apologize that it was one of the speed limits. I know it is a bad curve by you. Yeah. And, uh, but I just wanted to get the perspective of what that road entails with the hidden driveways and the, the corner uh, where you guys are and how dangerous that actually is, the traffic that's there. Um, so, you know, uh, with that, I guess if anybody wants to speak about that or... Um, and one thing I just want to say is that we're on your side. So it's not up to us yeah. to get that reduced. It's up to the New York State Department of Transportation. So we're on your side. So, but it's good to hear hear from you, so we can pass that along to the DOT. It's got to go through Albany, right? Yes. Well, I grew up right there on the North Rapid Road, and there was a fatality there was. when I was in high school. Yep. And I think one or two young girls died. Yep. And I was here, I think, nine years ago when she was a baby, and she lives right there on the corner. And now we have three little kids in the back of me, the Browns, and I have two granddaughters, and I have put my blinker on to go to my son's house, which is down right across from the Browns' business, and I have had somebody almost coming right through my vehicle or have passed me. And if this was your grandchildren, I think you would want something done too. Oh, I agree. I've been in some of the driveways out there, and it's difficult even just to back out. You can't it's, get out. No, you can't. I agree with that. Can we just get your name so we Yes, it yeah. was Kathy Roscoe. Yeah. Now it's Kathy Nezazan. Thank you. And you live on North Racket now? I right? grew up on North Racket. I live okay. in Razor now. Okay. I came to you speak on behalf of my son. Track? Pardon me? You have three children on that road? Yes. Okay. I say Thank Inez you. is on. Yep. Uh, Todd Mullen. I spoke with Steve O'Shaughnessy and Sam on this issue back in the spring, and this is probably our third attempt to try to reduce the speed limit. Um, visibility is horrible. Sam, I think you have some of the copies. I have copies of pictures that Ray graciously printed out of the curve. When you're going over top of the curve, right across from the final touch detailing, you lose visibility, and our neighbor lives west of us. If you're sitting in a small car, you have to time it at least three seconds, because if there's a small car going through the gully, coming up around the corner, you will lose visibility of that car. Um, a lot of issues, and I know it's based on the amount of population in the area. If you look at Messina, you have a divided highway, speed limit's 35 and out there it's 55. 
recently, I've never even really given any thought, going outside of Messina on the West Hatfield Road, through the S curves, there's a speed limit reduction, then it goes to 45 until it gets all the way through the curves, and then it increases up to 55. Um, and then obviously down the other end of the road goes 45 on the further extent of our extension, but uh, I can present those terms here. Okay. On another note, there was another vehicle, I believe it was last summer or the summer before, one of our neighbors was up on the hill, pulled across the road to get his mail, and went back into his yard, and coming across that hill, he got T-boned and totally ripped rear end of the car right off and very fortunate he wasn't killed. And on another issue, Don McComb, neighbor that lives on the old hangar road, he had a real good point. He said if there wasn't an issue, why would the town of Messina move the airport entrance the way they did? Because I've, I've been living down there for 25 years. And I remember when the fuel tanks used to come in through the old hangar road and it just cringe every time the tankers would pull out. You know, it's, obviously it's got to go through all of me, but I appreciate all your support and everything that you do. We'll do our best. And uh, Al? Yes, I, I was here two years ago. Uh, Alan Rollage, I brought it to your attention. Uh, I know Steve, you weren't that chair then. Um, I brought a petition also and asking for the, the speed limit to be reduced to something uh, less than 55. I'm in the beginning of uh, North Racket, where I think the 10th house passed Bailey Road. And uh, quite often pulling into our driveway or backing into our driveway um, is very difficult, dangerous. Um, cars come, they come from uh, East uh, Hatfield, and the minute they get past that 30 mile an hour speed limit sign, by the time they get to my house, which uh, like I said, I'm the 10th house, probably maybe at less than a tenth of a mile, they're doing. 55, 60 miles an hour. Yep. So they're not really paying attention to somebody putting a single light on to pull into their driveway. Um, you know, we have grandchildren in business regularly. They're all, you know, we're afraid to let them go in the front yard and play. Um, it, it, it's a dangerous section. Um, you know, I think it does warrant. Uh, the other end of our road uh, is 45 from um, just past the, the, the airport to 37C. Um, so it, it makes a lot of sense if you could just, uh, uh, you know, if, if DOT we could reduce it to 45 in our section, at least down to the airport. Yeah, I think it would be, especially the curve where Todd lives. Um, it is very dangerous. I travel that road a lot going over to the mall and to, uh, to Barnhart, and a number of times I've had vehicles manu uh, maneuver that curve and be over the yellow line. Um, so you got to be on your toes when you're traversing around that corner. So. Do you know, sir, if, if anyone from the DOT has been out there and seen that? Because you do have a very dangerous situation. When I came here two years ago, they were going to contact DOT. Frank uh, D'Agostino was actually in the room that night, and um, he said usually what the procedure is, they go out and they put a counter down to, to count the number of cars that go by there. My neighbor, Joe Verbill, sits there all, all day long. If you want to yeah. know how many cars go by, <laughs> you can contact Joe Verbill. He'll tell you. It'll be probably more accurate than a, than a counter. But uh, I, I do not know that if TOT has been out there, um, honestly. Now, on that question, the other end is 45. Do you remember, have you lived long enough to know if that was 55, that got reduced, or was that always 45? That was always 45. As long as I remember. That was always 45? I don't remember that. I've been here 20 years doing trace. Yeah, I was just trying to find some history where they reduced that and we could get past practice, but you don't, it was always 45 that you remember. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I have one other comment. Um, since Hannaford's closed, it was never like that before when Home Depot opened up at Walmart. We could see a lot of extra traffic travel on that route. Now since Hannaford's closed, everybody's running into town the back way to go get groceries. The other thing that we can't control 
coming up through that hill, I have a video on my phone, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, sometimes 1 o'clock at night, the Amish make trips back, and they have, thank God they, they're not like the Amish of West, they have two uh, lights on their vehicle. Some of them have a reflective triangle, some of them don't. So if you're crossing that hill at night, you see two red lights, you think you're approaching a vehicle, and them horses, when they come up on top of our hill, they're just a snail space because it's that steep of a hill. So if you're doing 55, 60, you see lights, then all of a sudden you're on top of them. I'm surprised there hasn't been an accident. Yeah. In all honesty. That's a good point, too. There's yeah. also some farming equipment out there as well. Absolutely. Um, I know that uh, when you drive the speed limit compared to going 45 miles on that entire road, it's 15 seconds difference. So 15 seconds can save a life. Absolutely. You know? And we're just trying to prevent a fatality yeah. from happening before it does. Um, also, my neighbor Todd Brown, you have a couple comments if you please allow me. Folks, I'm Todd. I own Final Touch Detailing. Um, we did get permission with the town to be there, so everything is definitely legit there. Uh, but of course, since we've been at that location for the last couple of years, of course, at our level of our business, we are pulling in customers from Plattsburgh, Malone, Constable, Chattagay. I have actual customers from Carthage that come to us once a year. So we're pulling in more people all the time to town, but of course that's also pulling in more traffic on that road. Um, some of the biggest issues that we've had is customers trying to leave our driveway heading towards, our, towards town because you can't see over that little bit of a hill at that curve. Um, I also have video on my phone if you guys want it showing you can hear a car coming and you can about how long it takes to actually see that car if you're trying to get out of our driveway. Uh, especially if you're trying to leave our driveway and head towards the airport. If you try and leave and you can't see cars coming, you really, you can see by the video, you don't have a lot of time to, to get moving or get out of the way one or the other. Uh, we've seen many, many close calls, especially people bringing boats to us or bringing campers in, trying to get a camper or a boat into our, our shop. Uh, obviously slows traffic down when you know they're they're kind of in the road like that. Uh, so hopefully we can get all the people in Albany to have it reduced to kind of help out with that. Like you said, with us being there, of course it is bringing in a lot of extra traffic as well as money. Mm -hmm. That was in the winter time. Yeah, we are bringing in money because, like yeah. I said, we are bringing yeah. customers to yeah. town from all over. Yeah. Stay with your contact with anyone in Albany. Yeah. In the wintertime, you end up having like people like literally almost on your lawn. I mean, yeah, definitely. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you got the school bus issue too. Yes. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kenny McQuaid, who works for me, in that dip, two years ago, told his truck coming out of the right one. They came over the top of the hill and they told his truck seventeen thousand dollars worth of damage. Mm -hmm. He didn't get hurt. It was Thirty years in the fire service, I've been to that exact location right in front of Mr. Brown's house. I've been in front of the other gentlemen. So several accidents, mm -hmm. and then that young lady spoke about the two girls that passed me. Sure. Three were my classmates. Sure. It's, it's absolutely, I absolutely support them, and I hope we can do everything possible to get that reduced. My next door neighbor flipped his car last year. He was rear-ended. Um, I live right down the road from Don, and. Uh, Total of the vehicle, and uh, you know, I have young kids. If they were in the front yard, they probably would have been killed. So, can I just get your name, sir? Eric Lacourse, yep. L A C O U R S E. If you didn't sign in, if you couldn't sign in, that way we could cross reference and have it signed. Yeah, so we send. So, do you want to have a motion for support? Yeah, I'd like to make the motion that. Uh, we support the efforts to reduce the speed limit on uh, North Rocket River Road. Second. Could write a letter. Write a letter about the pile of information. Uh, yeah. We videos. have videos we can send. Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. If there's anything else we can do to uh, help support this effort, please. Yeah. If you want to send me everything I have, and I'll pass yeah. it along. Yeah. That would be great. So we got a motion 
seconded by Councilman Nicola. Any further discussion? I do. I've lived on that road for 14 years myself, and I live just not even a mile, half a mile past the O'Neill Road, which is where the passing zone starts. So most people pass right in front of my house, and not even a quarter of a mile past my house, it turns to 45. So people are speeding up 60, 70 to go around somebody just to put the brakes on. When they get around the corner to go 45, obviously they don't slow down and go 45 when they hit that bridge. Um, I've seen accidents in my front yard, in the neighbor's yard, several. Um, they just fly around the curb and go right in the yards. I've seen several accidents in the winter, Melanie, you talked about. Um, I have seen, there's no shoulders. So the minute your, because it's happened to me, the minute your car hits the edge of the road, it pulls you right off the road. So when you're going that speed, it's, it's scary. I've seen people off the road in the winter, several. And that's where I We had an airport uh, sign in as well. Mm -hmm. was it two years ago anyway? And that, you know, last Frank, year, Frank, last had, year, last year it was Frank had mentioned too that uh, the work going on by our highway department has had issues as well with people speeding past them, and it's a very dangerous situation. And the Amish, too. There's a, oh, yes. I've noticed a marked increase. There's probably before maybe one or two. Now, you guys probably know, so I'd say there's at least 10 a day, and I don't think I'm in debt to I've seen them daily. Yeah. And so, three or four times every day. Every day. Yeah. Religiously, every day. Three or four times a day. I'll send you that video saying right. it was at night time, and actually they were carrying lumber in the back of their bag. It was 11 at night. Okay, good. That's good to have. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? So carried. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you, very much. thank you, guys. We have a draft for a large solar farm. Our illustrious town attorney sent around. Do you want me to talk about Yeah, Steve, I uh, sent a proposed draft for everyone to consider. Um, what I recommend is that everyone take a few minutes and read through and send comments, questions, concerns about the draft solar law. Uh, we should also send it off to the um, planning board uh, and probably the zoning board of appeals too, just for the folks who are working with the code all the time to get their take on it and any questions and concerns that they have. Um, the process for adopting the adopted like any other local law, but this one's subject to um, a more extensive secret review, which we'll have to do. Right. So just just know that. Um, look forward to, to getting your comments and concerns, and then we can get it set for a public hearing and, and get it out for uh, people to review and comment. As we spoke uh, previously, should we also kind of dovetail that with MED and their, their tariff as well, see if there's something that needs to be addressed either way or? Yeah, Sam, I, I don't think that the, the MED tariff talks in terms of the technical details, but we'll certainly make that comparison just to ensure that, that they, you know, there's no conflict between the two. But I don't imagine that, that there's going to be any conflict at all. Yeah, from what I've read, too, this is more for commercial. So it well, well it, it, it's more detailed with respect to the commercial state because those um, can be considerably more intrusive, right? Especially to the neighbors, they they can be, you know, fairly large. Uh, they can be large. They, you know, to generate any um, true megawatts takes uh, a fair amount of, of acreage in the North Country to, to generate that. So. It's, you know, when you're talking about the, the bigger facilities, obviously, there's more regulations that you want to consider. But it does it does address even the, the rooftop solar as well. Okay. So, would we have to say... Well, what I'd recommend is that we get it off to the, to the um, planning board and the zoning board of <coughs> allow you to have a, a 
chance to review it, get comments back. We can make a um, uh, another draft, and then I would suggest setting a public hearing at that point to get comments once we've got an opportunity to review it and make comments. So then our September meeting and then set the date then? Absolutely. Good. All right. Any questions from anybody? Uh, the next thing was just to keep you up to speed. We've got the uh, Arconic has finally got the ability to transfer the boat launch. It's on Route 37 down there, across the Route 37 from the Alcoa East. Still gets us to be stuck. I don't know if you noticed it. We've had it a couple of years. We've been maintaining it, even though it's not ours. Frank's been down there taking care of it. Uh, but they uh, stopped in. Uh, Kirk Grip from Arcana. Uh, the intention was this from the start was to turn it over to the town, but there have been issues with title and land, the ability to turn it over. So we met with, uh, Eric was there for that meeting as well, and he left a paper copy of the transfer. Did he ever send you an electronic one that he said he would? He did. He did. Somewhere along the line, we'll have to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some concerns that we should we should talk to him about and see if we can straighten out so that the you know agreement reflects what I think. You know, th those were done pursuant to a consent decree on uh, enforcement action brought by EPA among others, and I think there's some tweaks to the document that will be required in order to make it consistent with the consent decree. So we can work with the um, the group to, to get those accomplished. Okay. We also, I just threw, put on here that uh, we have been advised by our maintenance guy, Jim Bexton, that he plans to retire in the near future. So just should keep in mind what we're going to do and if we want to hire anybody beforehand to get, have a little succession planning. I think we need to do that. Talk with Frank Agostino yeah, and uh, set up the criteria and put it out. We have a rough date yet, but end of this year. Okay. So we'll get into the heating system as well and see a boiler. I think it's crucial that we get somebody on board at least two months prior to his departure because he does so much. He actually is the mainstay in this building and the museum and the library. So I tried to tell him no, he can't. <laughs> not, uh, as usual, look, like everybody else, he doesn't listen to it. I mean, on personnel, do you have a job description for that at this time? I think Frank's got one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alright, that's it for that. Uh, I have a motion to approve the minutes for July 17th regular meeting. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Steve, what? what? That should be for the 22nd as well. Yeah. We got two.
Alrighty, so I need an authorization to sign the application for funding for the maximum amount available through the Justice Court Assistance Program and authorizing me to execute the certification. Second. Melanie and second by Sam. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? So we we wanna, I want authorization to send out an RFP, R, press for RFP. I have RPF. Are you just playing with me or what? I know. <laughs> 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 for a uh, to do our auditing for this upcoming year. <coughs> we need a yeah. No, it's not for this year. Well, no, that's for the upcoming year. Oh, three three years. years. Next three years, that's our job. 2021-22. Would that be under professional services or would that have to go over our piece considering it's not a professional services? She was the object for whatever we want. Right. Professional services. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Sam, it's not subject to competitive bidding pursuant to Section 103A of the General Municipal Law, but sure it's not 103B. I'm sure. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, sending out the RP is yeah. certainly is something that we get to know competitive bid anyway. Yeah. Okay. Did I get a motion? So no. 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 Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Abstention? So carry. All right. Next, uh, authorizing the town clerk to hire SecureScan to digitize the town's permanent records, make room in the town hall. That would cost not to exceed eleven thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, these funds are currently available in the town clerk's records management budget. Did you want to talk about that? Ms. Town Clerk. It is also including um, some documents for the assessor at, at $1,300. Um, I'm also responsible for that. Um, I have the money in the budget. We should be doing it every year. So we always have room in our vaults for permanent records. And right now we're really full. So we haven't done it for a few years, so it's time to so move. catch up. So would that include uh, some of our like ten pilot cabinets he has in his office now? Well, he's already emptied a lot. He <laughs> just put well, six yeah. boxes in my in my vault, okay. and those are the boxes that are going to be scanned. Okay. Um, he tried to put like eight more boxes down there, but I put him sent him back up to his office. <laughs> okay. He wasn't happy. Right. As soon as I get those scanned. And they will be read up pretty readily accessible as well as your Yes, anything if there's something that we need, we can contact um, Secure Scan and they will get us within a twenty four hours what we need. We don't, right. we don't have the key access to it? No, they have to take it to okay. scan it. Right. No, but once it's yeah, scanned, yeah. you'll have accessibility. Oh, you can access oh, it. oh, oh yes. It'll be okay. um, electronic so okay. And he'll, he'll um, digitize them the way I want them okay. so that I can search the way I want a couple different ways. Okay. And whatever you know the other offices need, like payroll. So we'll get together. All right. We will. We will, yeah. Okay. okay. I made a motion. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Looking for authorization to sign a grant disbursement, disbursement agreement for the expansion of the Celine G. Philbert Cultural Center in the amount of $150,000 through the state and municipal facilities program. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, looking for authorization to sign the inner municipal agreement to do the parking lots off Andrew Street. Uh, the 
pending the approval of the town attorney, he has approved it and sent it to all of us. So move. Uh, yeah, there were some minor changes to the language, in the state, but you know, assuming those changes are acceptable to the village, and I don't see any reason why they would be. Yep. So okay. Second. Okay. Motion by Miller, seconded by Carbone. That's uh, money funded by uh, Senator Joe Griffo. Correct. Right. I would say um, the reason why we're doing an inter-municipal agreement is uh, Senator Griffo wanted to give us the money to do a joint works project for town and the village. And we agreed upon the parking lots in the back, uh, either side of Andrew Street. I don't know, they were thinking that maybe it was this side and then Jim Murphy or development, community developer bought the building next, so we did over there. Thank you for starting it all on our grand opening. <laughs> Sorry, we made sure everything was blocked off. Uh, so, uh, did we own that? Did we say approved? No, we're going to vote out. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So carried. I'm looking for authorization to pay the note on the Messina Airport hangar that we bought last year in the following manner. Uh, we have the money from a grant that was provided by uh, Addie Jenny, the former assemblywoman of $125,000. 175 thousand dollars from the proceeds of the sale of the property and town property on county road 42. It's the town of messina to petawatt for 250 thousand so i want to use 175 from that and we'll pay off that so moved second by nicola all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstention Looking for authorization to sign the grant offer for the airport improvement program, project number 3-36-054-080-219. This is the fire truck. Federal grant of 32 or $332,500. State share of Eight thousand seven hundred fifty thousand, and the town has to uh, has to pay eight thousand seven hundred fifty. So the total for the vehicle will be three hundred fifty thousand. And what's the timeline on that, Councilman Miller? Do you are you aware? Timeline of bill process and everything probably about a year, probably maybe a little bit less, depending on how busy they are, but. Build a fire truck. It, it's a it's a smaller fire truck. It's not like one of our big engines, so it could be a little less time. It's bigger than the one we got now. It's just class two, but so I would say a year time with by the time you get this all done and build time. Okay. So move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So it is the time of year, the time of within six years, that we have to appoint a uh, sole assessor for the town of Messina. Uh, according to state law, the assessor's terms end on September 30th. 2019 and uh, we have to make an appointment for six years starting October 1st 2019. Okay. I think we uh, appoint Vern Brand for a six-year term as sole assessor for the town of Zena. Second. Um, Vern has actually recouped almost $3 million in assessment uh, by going through the properties and finding assessments that were um, given reductions but were warranted at the time so he's doing a great job he's going through the files and, and i'm sure making things up so 
good candidate and uh, good assessor for us. And I think a lot, everybody should take the time to stop in. I mean, you talk about he used to have all those file cabinets lined up on the wall, but he has gone through all those files and uh, uh, filled the vault. Filled the vault. <laughs> but uh, and thrown away a lot of unnecessary paperwork that we did not need and it's, uh, he's really did a lot of going through all the um, uh, properties in the scene and checking on every star exemption that was out there as well as veterans. I don't know if there's anything else, but track them all down, and that's it. Was over three million dollars? It was 2.9 million uh, raised in assessment just for the village. Uh, the school district actually sent him a letter thanking him for doing the doing that and raised uh, their assessment a lot or lowered their tax rate. So he's done a good job. Receptive to people, and I, I think that we should point for six year terms. So we have Sam and Al. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. All right. I'd like to make entertain a motion to sketch schedule a special town board meeting for Monday, August 26, 2019 at 5 p.m. The purpose of the special meeting is to discuss and adopt a resolution subject to mandatory referendum. This resolution, if adopted and approved, would allow the transfer of real estate assets of the town of Messina that are used to operate the Messina Memorial Hospital to a private, not-for-profit entity operated by St. Lawrence Health System, Inc. By adopting the resolution, resolution subject to mandatory referendum, the Town Board would guarantee that the taxpayers of the Town of Messina would be able to vote on the proposed transfer. The vote, if the resolution is adopted, would take place on Election Day, which is November 1st or 5th, 2019. So moved, Mr. Supervisor. Second. Motion by Carbone, seconded by Nicola. Any further? Is this coming from our council, Jason and Eric? Is this a recommendation of them, or is this? Time, yeah. I mean, the in order to um, transfer <coughs> real estate assets, right? The ability of the town board to do so is subject to the. Uh, section 64 of the town law, which requires um, a referendum. The town law in that section specifically requires uh, a permissive referendum, um, but the uh, threshold for a permissive referendum is low, and we know this is a matter that's generated a lot of public interest, so the idea would be to let the voters make the decision. And the town board has the ability, whenever something is subject to a permissive referendum, to do it by mandatory referendum. Right? And so that's that would be um, what the recommendation would be. I know uh, everybody's been you know, talking about it. There's been a lot of concern, um, and this will give the voters of the town of Messina an opportunity to make a choice. Thank you. Uh, that's and that's what I think we've all thought about going along through this process, that it had to be uh, not necessarily put out there for everybody to see the whole process for the negotiations and what happens. But now we have it, and this is the perfect opportunity for the taxpayers of the town of Messina to uh, learn about it, understand, see if this is what they want, and vote on election day. I think it's a great idea. Who writes? I, I, I agree. I, I, there's been a ton of public. I agree. Who writes what goes on the ballot? Because that could. <coughs> that, how, who writes that? Or, who writes that? Up? Or, yeah, I'll I'll do a draft of that for the board to consider. And the actual um, ballot, you know, there there's certain statutory requirements 
but we'll have that for discussion. Um, <coughs> Resolution adopted. Thank you. Five o'clock, did you say, Steve? Yes. Aye. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Okay. All right. Transfers and amendments? Having no transfers and amendments, I make a motion that the bill signed by Councilman Nicole and myself today be approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extension? So carried. Warrant number eight? That was, that was, that was it. Sorry. You jumped the gun. I said seeing no budget transfers. That's what I said. I know. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and I suppose you got something about the July financial reports too. No, we got them though. Okay. <laughs> Anybody has any questions about them? If not, uh, the committee reports. Anybody got anything? For I do. Uh, Highway Superintendent Frank Diagstino is out of town. He gave me a report to read. Or to cover the highway department first, St. Lawrence County Paving Crew paved the Hamill Road, the Administration Road to the airport, and Haverstock Road for the MED substation to approximately 1,800 feet past South Grass Haverstock Road intersection. Total miles of road paved 2.46 miles. Um, Barrett will be